Good evening, everyone. The City of Brockton Diversity Commission is now meeting. The current hour is 7, 11 a.m. or 19, 11, if you're doing the military time. The first item on the agenda is the adoption of the prior minutes. Each commissioner has the minutes. Do you have the minutes, Commissioner Cabral? There you go, sir. Oh, this is the agenda. I need both, sir. Please be advised with respect to uh, video recording and audio recording pursuant to the open meeting law. The chair has the authority to allow it. It is allowed. And also be advised that you are being taped by BCA, so your comments will be made a matter of the public record for perpetuity. Take a look at the minutes there, page one and page two. Vice Chair Taggart, do you recall the or call the order on the last meeting? 7.05 p.m. Do I have a motion to adopt 7.05 p.m. with respect to item number one? I second. All those in favor by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. personnel, human resources, Maureen Cruz, um, explain the applicant selection process. Also, to, it was, um, we discussed having her explain just the overall hiring practices in the city, not just, um, not just in regards to um, what happens. I need a motion to strike director of human resources and making it director of personnel. That's wrong. Are you motioning that? Yeah, I'm motioning to change the Director of Human Resources to Director of Personnel. And what's the rest of the narrative? Um, the discussion it was around... Um, just, just, the just, adding. just adding. Yeah, so adding. Okay. Um, the, the question or request from Director of Personnel Maureen Cruz to discuss uh, the city's overall hiring practices, not just um, this applicant selection process. Is there an objection? And also a data request. Jacob wants to say, Commissioner Tag wants to add that language. Without objection, nine of his consent, it carries. What's the next item? Um, make a motion to accept the minutes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 The ayes carry. Is there anyone opposed? Thank you. The next item uh, on the agenda is the street naming for Wayne McAllister, the late Wayne McAllister of the Southeastern uh, School Committee, uh, an extraordinary leader. Yes, sir. Um, add on. For the agenda? On the agenda. Second, mo can I get a motion on that? Um, second the motion. To add seven and eight to the agenda. Yeah. All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Good catch. Thank and, you. Um, sorry, may I add one no. more thing? No, go for it. That before we start, that we, since we do have uh, people here, if anybody, that we start with having people, if they have anything to bring up in the gallery, before you, we start, have the, uh, the visitors, here and the visitors approach and speak. 
Can Thank you so much, uh, Chair. Yep. With unanimous consent, we're going to suspend the rules. We're going to jump to um, item number six. We're not going to uh, require a sign out, but if there's any visitors that would like to appear before the commission at this time, the floor is open. <coughs> Hearing none, hearing none, we will, hearing none, we will close that option. Appearing. Could you state your name when you come up, my friend, please? Jimmy Ferreira. Jim, excuse me. Come on, Jim. And you can stand on there so everyone can see everybody. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just want to make an announcement. My name is Jimmy Pereira. I'm a mayoral candidate for the city of Brockton. I want to uh, pre uh, thank you for all for being here and actually taking uh, action and being a part of something that's great and something that's ne needed in the city of Brockton. Uh, as a uh, person that is actually saying for scholar and uh, preaches diversity as well, I think that is something that is very necessary in a community that is uh, home to uh, people from different uh, parts of the country and parts of the world as well. And I just want to make sure everyone uh, knows who I am. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, 774-240-4029. Uh, uh, you can also reach me at info at jimmyforbrockton.com. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Hearing none, we will carry on to the agenda without objection. Wayne McGallis is street naming. The Wayne McGallis is, um, I apologize, I started earlier. Wayne McGallister, our member of the Southeastern School Committee, an exceptional leader, an exceptional leader. Uh, one of the first, uh, the first person of color uh, elected countywide um, and also with respect to the uh, city of Brockton. We will formally be naming, uh, doing his street naming um, on July 22nd, which is a Saturday, at 10 a.m., and we're asking that the community uh, come out and participate. We'll be on the corner of, and I, if I'm not pronouncing this correctly, I apologize, Thatcher and East Street, Thatcher and East Street. Um, we will also make sure that this is posted on the City of Brockton's website. Um, we want to thank City Councilor of Ward 4, uh, Paul Stendinsky. Um, I spoke to him. He'd worked on this. Um, and we also want to give credit to our Vice Chair uh, Tagger for also the, his follow-up. So this will be uh, a very important occasion for all of us to participate, and I hope people are here. Again, July 22nd, corner of Thatcher and East Street, Wayne McAllister uh, Street Naming at 10 a.m. The family um, will be vacationing, so this, will, uh, this date was given. We were able to get this date to make sure that um, enough of them are available. So I appreciate the family as well. Are there any questions regarding that? I just want to ask the group um, if it's OK if I make a, a Facebook event to share, just at least on um, I don't just want to make sure if anybody's you know, opposed to it. I move that we um, vote to allow uh, Vice Chair Tagger to create a Facebook, just in case if we need to vote on it. Do we have a second? Um, I second that. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Also, can we request um, the city on events can post it on the website? No, that's what I said. The we're city. Gonna do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And it also be posted on um, Southeastern's website as well. Will we have um, the agenda for that day? Meaning. We will have to make. We will have to create one to see who will be speaking. I have not gone that far um, with um, Councilor Studinsky, but I, I suspect uh, that the mayor will speak. I suspect uh, members of the Southeastern um, School Committee will speak. Definitely, uh, my colleague on Southeastern, Mark uh, Lindy, will speak. Um, so, uh, yeah, but absolutely. We have, like, yeah, we will have to. We have a representative. Yeah. From yeah. our commission, it well, would be you. it would technically would be me, but I think that I mean, if anybody wants to speak, you'd be, I mean, I speak. You're, you're our yeah. spokesperson, our chairman, so I just want to make sure you know we have a representation since yep. we initiated Got it. this. Um, that's it. So it's a, it's an important occasion, and I look forward to having it. The second item on the agenda is the. Um, the bilingual education complaints. Uh, so we've gotten uh, several complaints with respect to bilingual education. 
uh, here at the commission. Uh, folks have called me, and I don't know, I think some others of you have gotten complaints. At the, the, in a nutshell, without being um, sugarcoating it, people feel uh, that the, we are taking a step back in terms of the education of children of color in the city of Brockton. Uh, specifically with respect to the budget cuts. A lot of folks didn't understand the process, but they feel that the, um, the bilingual teachers or those that are certified in that, those roles are, are being cut and they're being cut not legitimately. Uh, so it's a lot of information to go over um, and I am going to um, rely on the community that is here and those that are in a part of the school system. But I did speak with Superintendent Smith. We, we had a, a very long conversation uh, with respect to what's happening with the school budget. Uh, so I, I'm taking my um, caution from her because it makes a lot of sense. The final numbers are not in in terms of education yet. The state House, as far as I know, the legislator has not given out, as of last Friday, a final number, so nothing is on uh, Governor Baker's desk, as far as I know. Uh, the second piece of this is, is that regulatorily, with respect to what we're supposed to do to, with students that are part of the bilingual, bilingual education program and other programs that people require assistance, there are certain guidelines that we must go by. And the superintendent has told me that it is her intention of making sure that the children are educated pursuant to what the requirements are of the Department of Education. She did say, and she gave a very good example, that there are some teachers that are certified in bilingual education that may have to come out of general ed to make sure that regulatorily we are educating those kids. Um, one of the things I asked it directly was about this rumor about children having study time, being unsupervised in cafeterias or study areas. She said that that was not going to happen. That was just, it was just a, a, a rumor and that that would be contrary uh, to uh, the Department of Education's regulations. So that is my understanding from her. Um, she also made it quite clear uh, that when she met with the Brockton City Council that she felt that they would uh, support uh, the, I believe the mayor has made a request to go full levy at two, two and a half percent, and she believed that, that, that she received that, she would receive that support uh, from the city council. I'm not sure if that's been voted on. I'm looking at city council, those that are looking, over oh, has that been voted on already? The, the budget was passed at the full two and a half percent. So, so that, that has been done, and I believe they gave, gave us an additional three million dollars. If that's, yes, yeah. yeah, so. But uh, that three million dollars isn't all going to. Three million dollars There, so, clear, right. Yeah. So there, so the so the levy has passed the city budget. Of course, the city budget has passed. I apologize, and we're looking at an additional three million dollars. Not necessarily going all going to uh, Brockton Public Schools. Uh, she also mentioned that we still do have the hundred thousand dollars that was set aside for the uh, the education. Uh, lawsuit because there is not equity as we know across the Commonwealth with respect to uh, urban school districts. Uh, so I guess there are some other communities that are going to be a part of that future lawsuit. Now it is my understanding, and I could be wrong on this, that a part of the problem with the city of Brockton, and I think uh, our the general one of the I think is the city treasurer. I, it escapes me at, at this point, but he the chief the chief financial officer kind of talked about the two and a half levy, how we are constantly under that that has caused uh, f problems with funding the uh, Brockton public school system. I believe that's a part of the education formula. So we would not only have to maximize the 2.5, the 2.5 now, but would be every year. I believe I heard that conversation, but I know that there may be some pushback on that because that, is, uh, that would be a huge increase in terms of the, the, the taxpayers, correct? Yes, well, he tries to, the mayor tries to not have to go up that 2.5 instead of the 8. I think he did like 1.5, one, one year, 2. So they try to keep that down, but when the state looks at what Right. We have not. Right. Right. 
so, Neg, yeah. so that was my understanding of, that's always been my understanding of the formula for two and a half. In order for you to maximize dollars from the Department of Revenue or from the Commonwealth, you have to maximize that particular levy. They'll look at that. They'll, they'll look at that. So the, so the community still needs to hear that monies are moved out of our school budget in order to support the students that have moved over to the charter school here in Brockton, which, which was opposed by many community leaders. So that was City Councilor uh, Monaghan. Thank you for that background and then thank you for uh, coming tonight. Uh, so the complaints, I guess for our discussion tonight, complaints that you have heard put them on the table. I think I was hoping we put out that people would attend tonight because I think that uh, people need to have a place where they can inventory uh, their concerns so we can respond to it. Now, I would like to have more citizens come out and discuss it from their perspective. I have my perspective, but I think it's very important that we hear from the parents and uh, the students. Um, but I was, you know, just like many of you are, Commissioner uh, Tagger and some of us were really concerned about this, uh, having students just, you know, sitting in conference rooms or cafeterias. Our next meeting, we don't have a meeting in August, correct? Correct. Could the first Tuesday, the first Thursday of September, and I don't have that date in front of me. Um, I actually would like to make a motion to invite the chair or the head of the bilingual program as well as um, Superintendent Smith to the next meeting um, to get an update. Um, one of the, like, September 7th, I would like to, to make a motion um, to invite them in. Um, and before I, I make the motion, I also want to mention, because like the rest of you, um, we even have a commissioner that works for Brockton Public Schools. Um, one of the complaints I actually heard from a teacher, I know you had mentioned that, you know, it's a possibility we pull educators who that's not their their field um and to assist what i was told directly from a teacher is that he was using his phone in google that's again this is just what i was told um so i would like i have some some questions i would like to um ask just you know to, to have the the community um get feedback and to know what the the plan is going forward he was using his, his it, yeah, phone that's, to do what? I mean, yeah, um, uh, translate. To, to translate? Yeah. To, into the, the language of those students. students uh, yeah. He was educating the students? Yeah. He was pulled into before, that classroom. He was, he was, I'm just telling you what I was told. Yeah. I don't know the validity of it. I, I said he's an educator. Um, so I, again, this could all, um, that's just what I was told. That was one of the complaints. Another complaint is, and, and you already addressed it, is these courses are mandated. Right. Um, so if this is a legal issue, um, and you know, again, I was told the same things that students would be sitting in, the, you know, the cafeteria for three or four periods, um, and I just know there's a growing concern amongst the community. Um, so I'd like to just get a follow-up. So long story short, my motion is I make a motion to invite. Um, what, what is her name? Is it Christina? Christina? You can spell it. So, Dana Voss. Dana Voss. I want to invite. She's the chair the or the director. Chair. Yeah, she's the um, bilingual department is that chair. Like the director. Yeah. yeah. At, just at the high school, though. She's only at the high school. That's oh, what's going to be impacted. I, I want. The district bilingual. It would be the district. Somebody different. Well, honestly, I would. And if that's the case, I mean, then I would like to invite. I would like to invite both. I would like to invite the, the um, Christina um, for Brockton High um, bilingual program, as well as the districts, as well as um, superintendent. Yeah, so, it so it, it's going to, well, that's why I was yeah, just, exactly. my point, it's going to come, it would come through Superintendent Smith. So Superintendent Smith said this evening that she would make herself available to the commission. She also gave me uh, a name of somebody that will be coming with her. And I don't remember. I didn't write it down. I, I took uh, scribbly notes. I apologize. Um, so that we can do the motion, but she's willing to do it. It's just an issue, really, of scheduling. So you want to make your motion that they come the first 
so Thursday, September 7th. September, when does Isn't school start day? again? The day before. Isn't that election day? No. It's not. It's That's the 19th. It's the 19th December, September, it's November. September 19th and November 7th. Do we have a second on that motion? Second. All those in favor of saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So noted. Done. Um, I'd just like to make uh, one comment, and, and this being the um, Brockton Diversity Committee, um, of course, we're all concerned what's happening in Brockton, but I've interviewed um, union presidents and people of other unions in other cities. This is not just happening here. Uh, bilingual, uh, actually, I have uh, Jessica Tang, mm -hmm. the uh, president of the Boston Teachers Association, That's coming right. to speak on my show, Stand Up Strong with Ed and Chuck, this Saturday. And one of the things we were talking about is they're hitting, getting hit by the same cuts. Um, and basically, let's call it what it is, we're having an attack on education. And I'd like to thank the members of the committee being concerned of what's happening in Brockton and also happening in our state. So it's, it's, a, it's a statewide issue, public education being underfunded. Countrywide. Un countrywide issue being underfunded. Thank you for that. I look forward to joining you on your show. Thank you. Any other, any other comments regarding bilingual education? Good. So the next item on the agenda is the Lopes lawsuit. So I did have detailed notes um, regarding the update, but I'm going to just go off my head. So. As you know, there was a Brockton Enterprise article recently with respect to the increase uh, in, the, in the amount of interest, which is normal, actually. And then the second piece, um, the city of Brockton motion for a new trial was denied. Uh, so now I believe it will, uh, it will be pursued in the appellate court. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, that has happened yet, if there's been any filings, uh, but because I forgot to ask that question. But I did talk uh, to our solicitor uh, with respect to what is happening, because I got a lot of calls after that Enterprise article, of what is happening uh, in terms of uh, the city improving diversity. And my response to that was asking the solicitor uh, what was going on in terms of uh, the review by Attorney Prince and, and my own take on what's going on in Brockton. First, so officially, the, the managers and city leaders that are supervising employees in the city of Brockton have received their MCAD training. So that has happened by the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination. What that will do is that gives you the outline of 151B, which is a discrimination law that covers the Commonwealth. It will tell you about EEOC uh, rules and regulations, and it will help you also in terms of which questions you ask, which questions you don't ask. An example it is, uh, how old are you? You can't ask that. Uh, your religion, why are you wearing a scarf? You can't ask that, stuff of that nature. So that training has happened with all the city managers. I'm impressed by that because I didn't know that that had happened, that it happened silently, which is impressive. The second piece is, is that the investigation is still going full throttle. Several city managers have been interviewed by Attorney Prince. Um, at this point, where I, uh, the solicitor was unsure if uh, Director uh, Cruz had been interviewed yet, uh, but they are moving forward. And thirdly, we are reminded, especially here at the Commission, uh, that with respect to city managers, city managers or employees of the city of Brockton, their names cannot be discussed at this commission in the negative or any commission in the negative. Under the open meeting law, we must be in executive session. So with that said, anything involving uh, Director Cruz is actually a personnel matter uh, that is confidential. Um, but I was interested in, in knowing if she had been interviewed just to see how far we have gotten. And at this point, um, that information was not available. Uh, so my point to you is this. The mayor said that he would hire a, uh, a law firm to do the investigation. We're proceeding in that regard. 
with respect to have, have the, having the managers receive formal in-service education around retaliation and discrimination, that has occurred. I'm very happy about that. And thirdly, with respect to um, what the city has done uh, with the new ordinance, I think that we are moving in the right direction. My only concern is on the new, and this is me speaking, on the new ordinance is that the Diversity Commission was not, uh, unless individual commissioners were contact, the Diversity Commission of the City of Brockton was not contacted regarding that ordinance because I had some thoughts uh, of how we could strengthen that ordinance and I had some thoughts of some of the stuff that could actually be taken out. Well, formally, yeah, well, formally. Our, our, yeah, formally ask our opinion. We are the advisory commission for the city of Brockton with respect to employment. That's a part of our role. Uh, so I would have liked to have added some of our language. And you know what else is important? I think that we are the people's representatives, as, as is the city council. I think that our input is very important. Um, so were you formally, con so you were formally, we were formally um, contacted by the mayor? Because this is the first time I'm hearing any updates as today. So I'm just saying that we're going to speak about one body. we got to speak about both because I don't know what's um, going on. Well, I'm just saying that we're going to say we're we wouldn't be No, by. we wouldn't be formally contacted by by the mayor. The mayor is not doing a new ordinance. So I would be, for, well, we should have an update. You, uh, I just actually take, yeah, we're getting it from you right now. I'm just saying that we're going to say um, the city council should formally I, 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 dis I, mm, I disagree. I, I disagree with you. I think that I think I disagree because I think that if someone is setting up legislation and that's our this our statutory ordinance for us to assist in that, then we should be contact. A mayor that's conducting an investigation with respect to personnel matters of the city of Brockton, I, I don't have a problem with him not contacting us until that's completed. I think that uh, what alarmed me was to see what was, you know, what was written in the Brockton Enterprise and that, and people to follow up saying, well, what is the status? But I think that in our last meeting, we talked about, somebody asked that we have the, the mayor, I don't know if it was, yeah, a, a commission. Actually, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, I think that he even asked. I'm just saying, yeah. I just, if, if we, there was also a meeting that was held um, in this same room where community leaders were and the, the diversity commission was, and that was held by the mayor wasn't invited to that either. I just don't know if I want to call out one body and not the other um, as far as communicating what's going on and steps that are taking place. Again, there were some commissioners that were invited to that meeting. Right. There were some of us that were left out that meeting. But I, but we, but so we, right. I just right. No, I saw, I saw the postings. Equal. Right. I saw the postings about that on Facebook. And, I, and so I'm going to say this. Communication right. around this. And I apologize. No, 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 that's fine. Communication around this right. whole thing. I get a lot of contact, like a lot of the rest of you guys do, right. around this issue. And there's been, very poor communication from the city um, as far as to this body, in my opinion. Maybe I'm the only one that's feeling that way, but that's fine. Um, but I don't know what's going on. Right, but um, to, no, and I, and I get that, but to your point. Even I, just to hear that there's something more going on, like right. that's something. But I think that, I think where the disconnect is, is that, and, and most of you, you all understand my style, I'm a stickler for ordinances. I'm a stickler for the rule of law. If there's an ordinance that says, we are the advisory body with respect to discrimination matters, equal employment in the city of Brockton. You step to it and you say that we're gonna contact them as that advisory group to give for information. I, there's no ordinance or direction with respect to the executive branch giving us updates. It would be nice to get that, but I'm only responding to I mean, if you that. If you reinstituted this diversity commission, I mean, I would just think I'd all due respect, you would keep this commission, Chairman, yeah. this commission in the loop. Being still a new uh, committee to the city, uh, may I suggest that if any of the commissioners have a question that would be, need to be asked to the mayor, that they could submit it to the chair uh, when you meet with the mayor, and, and maybe that's something we can set up with uh, the mayor for the chair to meet a, once a month or maybe even twice a month. Uh, and requested a... Uh, and we haven't done that. Right. We haven't so done that. So you are the voice of this commission. Well, that's the way we set it up. Yeah. But that really hasn't happened. Is that correct? Not officially, no. Not officially. I'm no. just saying, when there's a... When we were talking that's a great about idea. The, the, the homeless issue um, so I'd like to downtown, 
We have a motion. They, they have a task force. You didn't make a motion yet. The task force, the homeless task force, was contacted before they, you know, took whatever action. I just think proper etiquette or just the, the right thing to do is just keep us updated. But the verbiage, you're, right? If you're right. executives, oh, you have legal thing. I understand that. Right. But it's troubling that when people contact myself, I don't know how everybody else feels. Um, I don't have anything. I actually have gotten more communication from city councilors. So, so I, this is the first I'm hearing of any updates. I know there was an audit being done but, and all of this. Like, I didn't right, but when you but when you say that you don't have updates, you are robust. You mm -hmm. are robust on, I think that's the word. I think I'm right on that. You, so. But yeah, you are on, in terms of communications, whether it's you personally or whether it's the work you're doing for the commission, you have a huge line of communication on Facebook. So my mm -hmm. point to you is this, is that if in fact, uh, to what Commissioner Miller is saying, you could ask, the question could be asked for me, but you as Jacob Tagger could also ask the, you pick up the phone and ask that of the executive branch. I'm just talking as a right. body as a whole, not Jacob Tagger. Until I but see, see but the it, article in the enterprise, I'm just right, saying to right. him, Chairman, yeah. if we're gonna say one about one thing about one body not contest, it's gotta be the other body. Like, I, I understand it, I just want communication, that's it. Yep, then uh, I would like to make a motion um, for the committee to uh, submit questions to the chair on anything that has to do with the diversity in the city of Brockton and, and the committee and for you to set up a time of a minimum of one meeting a month and no more than three meetings a month with the mayor to ask these questions and work with the mayor uh, on working on the diversity of the city. Is there a second on that emotion? Janet? Can I just ask, do other commissions do that on a regular basis? Yes, when I was on the uh, library board and I know other chairs would meet with the uh, mayor. Um, now, would it, what, is it a set meeting? Not usually, but I, it's not out of the ordinary to have something. Also, the, the chair would meet with the library director and the mayor, uh, though we're a different commission. But yes, it's, it's not unheard of uh, for commissions to meet with the mayor. Remember, we all uh, serve uh, wh whoever the mayor is. That's who we are serving with the mayor and the, the uh, residents of the city. So we'd kind of be setting a precedent. Is that correct? No, no, it does happen. Other but commissions but not do. on a monthly, regular monthly basis. More that as I wouldn't say, but, but I'm going to. I, I know on the um, at, the at the library reward, it wasn't a set date, but we did we meet with a monthly. Usually, it's on the uh, the calendar where the mayor can meet him. Uh, and I also know the planning board chair does meet with the mayor again. Not a set date that has to be Thursday you know, third Thursday, but they do have a at least one meeting, if not more meetings. And I'm saying, especially around this issue, like, I, I'm not too sure about the monthly, it's, but the monthly? this is a, well, I'm still having a discussion on it, but mm -hmm. this is a special circumstance, too, so more communication, I think. It, it helps us perform our job better when we communicate with the community. You know, we have something to tell the community, because I don't know until I read the Enterprise. So we I really don't. That through you. Yeah. I believe that's what Commissioner yeah, Miller said. Yeah. That's all I want is update, just so we know what's going on. I think we should, as a university commission. This is a. And if anybody has any questions, it's better than it's better to have the chair ask the questions, and instead of eleven commissioners calling up and then getting the information. But yes, and it could be multiple, same questions by multiple people. So it's best to do it through the chair. Second, at a motion. Is there? A all those in favor by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Are, so are there any other questions regarding um, the lawsuit at all? Is there, is there any members of the communities that might want to ask a question? I know we already, we have a community member Pereira joining us. Thank you. Uh, I have, slow down, great. I, the question I have basically is, um, along with this lawsuit, 
do we know, how do we know how many other people have been affected through the same process? There will be something that we will find out. I usually, well, I don't hold on to grudges and I move on from things. I personally, without legal counsel or anyone, you know, haven't been advised, but the process that I have been through when I first came back to Brockton from Springfield, wanted to, wanted, wanted a position here at City Hall and I didn't get that position. Uh, I could, you know, question whether I'm qualified, was I qualified, or was the, per was the person more qualified? Uh, I can't answer that. But what I did do is pursue that question. I, looked to, I, I pursued that answer. I wanted to find out that answer. And I asked for professional feedback from certain people that worked in the, uh, in the, the city uh, uh, office, or worked in, um, under, the, under, under the city, and never received that information. So that kind of, one, was a strike. And along with the lawsuit was a, another strike as well. Even after that, asking for professional development and asking, you know, what could I do to better my chances of working for the city? I uh, never received an answer, but I also want to pursue different avenues. So I wanted to join the planning board. And that may not be an occupation or a job that, you know, maybe uh, it may be actually something that we may look at looking at the boards as well, not just uh, uh, employment uh, position, but different positions uh, working in the city, I never received an answer about joining that, that, that board. I sent a letter of intent, still never received a, a response. So that was a concern to me. That was, that was my third strike, and you know, I took actions following that uh, to, to make change. So my question is, how do we look at the processes and how because I don't want more of this issue to occur I don't want more people to come out the woodworks and say hey this happened to me because I might have been able to do the same thing so uh, how do we make sure that we look at that I know you guys are here as a committee but that information I think is important as well thank you, you want to tackle it? Um, well as is all I know and I think you're more familiar with the uh, situation I don't think that information has come out yet I know there's people who want to see people let go I've always stated well let's find out is this the low man on the totem pole or whatever? And, and same thing with the question you have. I don't think that since the city is investigating and went, as you said, hired an outside uh, law firm, I don't think we have uh, enough information to say what happened. As far as I know, if any commissioner knows anything else. Uh, well, we're asking that question. Right? Well, and I'm yes. only going again by what we probably all read in the enterprise. And, and I did speak to attorney Gordon. But in the article in Enterprise, mm -hmm. and I'm asking you if this came up, mm -hmm. it was mentioned about a possible class action lawsuit regarding mm -hmm. um, discrimination. Is that, do you know anything about that? I, 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 I don't know, I, other than what, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, other than, uh, you know, what I, what I personally have read, I mean, I wouldn't have talked to the solicitor about that because a class action lawsuit is something clearly that plaintiffs would bring. But I have said this publicly, and to one of the things that I like is what Jimmy just said. I, you know, I know that this is kind of hard, and I, and I really don't want to use the word grudge, but I think that a part of this is, is that if we are sued, if we are sued as class action, and that is a, a, another judgment, you know, we will be basically, or someone will be, someone will be, not we, uh, bankrupting the city of Brockton. And I'm, uh, you know, and I hear people, I know I've been a victim of discrimination. I've helped people on both sides, both as an employer, uh, as an employer and as uh, employees that have applied. You know, I've helped people through EEOC, but I can tell you, bankrupting the city of Brockton um, is not going to solve the problem. And I think that, uh, you know, I've gotten people on both ends of the spectrum that said, well, that's what we need to teach someone a lesson. But in the al reality, the, the lesson that you're teaching is the lesson of the residents, the taxpayers of the city of Brockton. Yeah, you're, you're, you're punishing all of us. Um, and, you know, and to what, you know, Commissioner Miller was saying, we don't, some people are calling for this resignation, that resignation. Uh, I've been interviewed in the media even as early as today. And what I've said is that that um, we need to be mindful and careful. Not one single individual uh, clearly controlled uh, the employment process for the city of Rockton. That's factual. 
Uh, so, uh, and, and, and it's a rarity, it's a rarity from a person, I'm coming from my human resource background, that the generalist or the director of HR or the chief of HR uh, is in the process other than doing background, background investigations, interviews, it's really, at, it's really at the bequest or the request of the hiring manager. Uh, who hires that particular, and that person should be held responsible for um, their actions. And that's why this, the new ordinance that, was, uh, that has come about is excellent in that regard. But again, my concern is, and for the public to hear this, is that you know, class action lawsuit, $100 million a judgment, the city of Brockton is bankrupt. So the question is, where are you going to live? Literally, that's how serious this is. This is really. You know, we, are, we have enough, we're gonna have, we have enough problem paying the judgment that's there, and that's why uh, it is responsible, and I know some people push back on that, but no, no matter who's the mayor of the city of Brockton, they would be taking the same exact steps, making sure they go through the appellate process, because it is a huge, a huge hit to the taxpayer ratepayers here in the city. And uh, the Lopes case, Thank you. Thank you. the Lopes case was, if, if I understand it correctly, someone who was qualified was passed over to someone who wasn't qualified or as qualified. That's that could be easy to end the retaliation. The retaliation. Just just to speak a truth, uh, and this is not just government. This is pretty much anywhere you go. If you have two people who are equally qualified, and and especially in government, and one supported X and the other one didn't support X, you, the person is going to get who supported whatever. Um, that's, and it's gonna be hard to prove because both people are qualified. Um, the Lopes case, as I said, was different because uh, one person wasn't qualified. But uh, unfortunately, that's the uh, reality of government throughout any country, let alone just here. Uh, but I think the issue is, and, and sets this, as I said, someone who, who was hired passed over because they weren't qualified. It, it could be because of race, it could be because it was a friend of X, we, we never know. I, I mean, in the investigation will come out that. So I think one thing is we do have to wait for the investigation to see what happens. Sure. Any other comments? Um, also, we had discussed at the last meeting was a data request mm -hmm. um, from um, Director of Personnel. So I've mailed out the data request to the director, and and so we so we're not meeting in August, so we'll have we should have a response by maybe the end of month or by August. Uh, but I'm pausing because I think I can communicate with you guys in email because we're not making a decision just to tell you that the data is available. Does that make sense? And that's what I was pausing to think about that. So we'll have the same opportunity. Exactly. Like that's what, like we did the last time with yeah, the school department. Yeah. 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 We have to have these discussions. So, you know, I mean, these are discussions we need to have. So the purpose of the data, and uh, Commissioner Tagger could explain it, was to build a benchmark. To just see where we stand as far as hiring in the city. Talk to um, community. So just to get the information out there, this is where we stand and, and how we can improve if we're doing um, an appropriate job in this city. Um, it, it's just like we did with uh, Brockton Public Schools is to see again, what the actual makeup of um, city, city employees um, is and if it's reflective and you know, appropriate. So we data doesn't lie as the chairman always does. Yes, talks. data doesn't lie. Well, I'm a data guy, data doesn't lie. Data doesn't lie. Uh, the next item, on, is there any other discussion with respect to the uh, Lopes lawsuit? No, but we have any, any questions, you are our spokesperson. Yes. So we can just forward those to us. And so we also, since we have the opportunity to have BCA here and then anybody here, anybody has any questions to reach out to any commissioner. Right. If you have any questions, and we'll filter them to our chairman, um, and w hopefully we'll get whatever questions answered that residents have um, you know based on the, the legal proceedings whatever you know just to get the information out to the community because we don't want to find out everything in the paper and you can always you can always call the commission at 508-562-4688 or the or you can email us at Brockton Diversity Commission at gmail.com as well 
is now, it is, I think uh, Commissioner Miller did have some new discussion, old business, new business, but is there any other adoption of uh, recommendations that needs to be offered by an individual commissioner at this point? Commissioner Miller, you had uh, wanted to have, you had an item for old business? question is, and it was in the minutes that we were going to ask the mayor to come to our September meeting. Uh, has that been asked? And it, will he be attending? Um, as we have under, he's one of the people we did ask to come to the meeting. I have not asked the mayor to come to the September meeting. Um, please charge it to my mind, not to my heart. So that is, that is uh, 10 demerits for me, Commissioner Miller. I, I, will do, I will do that. So I guess the real question is, I was asking Superintendent Smith as well. I believe, I believe the bilingual education will take a, a, a good portion. So should I invite the mayor still? Um, if the commission doesn't mind that we postpone the uh, invitation to the mayor until October, I, I Okay. So are you making that motion? Today? I think we can do it by administratively is done. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's called unanimous consent. <laughs> unanimous consent. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So we're pretty we're pretty good commission here. Okay. Um that was that was that it? Oh, so I have another question we're on. Commissioner Tagger. So we are oh, we moving on from yes. old business got new business. Yes. Um, so new business, we have um, any, can we find out any update maybe from uh, chief of staff in regards to filling, um, how we get information out to, um, we have a vacancy um, as far as commissioner. So where we're at, if we're gonna fill that seat or just get an update maybe in the city. So I think in, uh, I, there's a certain date that the mayor cannot appoint anybody to any commission because, because of the election. Because of the election. And, and that would count because I think there's going to be a primary. And I think the 90 days starts from when the primary. So I think we're in that time. B basically, and, and remember other years and other commissions, basically we can ask, but uh, uh, they will not be appointed till the mayor or the new mayor is sworn in in January. And Jack said it was September 19th as a primary. Mm -hmm. September 19th? I think it's 90 days. I, say I think it's right, but we are within that 90 days. Well, that concludes the agenda for the Diversity Commission. Are there any other motions? Move to dismiss. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? second. All those in favor by saying aye. Don't forget about the um, September 19th election, and that's the primary for the city of Brockton. Everybody needs to be involved. It's Diversity Commission is 508-562-4688. And as a member of the commission, and thank you to the BCA, uh, anybody who is watching this, please research your candidate. Get out there and vote. Get out there and work for a candidate that you support, but please Find out what they stand for. And July 22nd to be sure to come and see the new street naming. That's right. That's right. July 22nd, don't forget the Wayne McAllister street naming. And whatever you do, whatever you do uh, this week, next week, next month, say something great about the city of Brockton. Thank you all. So yeah, I want to want to thank you for asking the uh, follow-up questions. I think that one of the concerns that has been raised is the uh, recent uh, elevation of um, Sharon Walder uh, to an administrative position within the central office of Brockton Public Schools. Of uh, the feedback that we've gotten from the community, and this is something that we tend to address as well, uh, is that we thought that it would be an open 
process are in terms of any replacement of positions in the school department. Clearly the administration of the school department falls uh, within the authority of the superintendent, but all that has transpired in terms of uh, discrimination, in terms of employment practice and stuff of that nature, uh, we feel strongly about having uh, transparency. Now many of us uh, do, I don't personally know Dr. Murray, but a lot of people do know Dr. Murray and I'm quite sure that he's a qualified individual for the role. But again, Again, um, should that have been an open position, whereas not necessarily, you, we're not saying that you know we're looking for a person of color, but with a transparent process where people of all backgrounds can apply, there may have been a strong person of color that could be able to uh, take that appointment. So uh, just to follow up to some of the questions that have been asked, uh, we do have some concerns around uh, transparency as we move forward, and we're just asking that people take a deep breath. Um, with respect to your uh, second question around, you know, um, how, do we have a relationship uh, with the city council and the school committee? I think that we do. I think that we have this relationship on an individual basis, um, but I think that it needs to be more something that uh, more professional and cohesive. And when I say professional, I think that it, there's an opportunity for us to have official communications, official dialogue. Um, we appreciate uh, Jack Lally as well as. Um, uh, Council Monaghan coming to the City Council, excuse me, coming to the Diversity Commission meeting this evening, but I think that, that it needs to be much more formal. I think that that would allow them to really get an understanding of what our role is beyond just the ordinance. And that's why I mentioned uh, with respect to wanting to be a part of the process of the new ordinance that the uh, City Council has passed and is waiting for the signature of the mayor. Uh, again, I think that there are uh, some things that I would have added to it. And I think there's some things, honestly, I would have probably taken away because discrimination uh, is unlawful in the Commonwealth and it has been unlawful for many years. There's been a federal law on the books with respect to discrimination. So we don't need to necessarily, necessarily reinvent the wheel. Uh, but um, I'm glad that the city of Brockton, I'm glad that our city um, councilors are making the right steps. So uh, again, uh, it was helpful to do these follow-up questions. And again, the only thing that I've asked uh, for uh, our community is to make sure that they keep in touch with the, Brock the Brockton Diversity Commission, Brockton Diversity Commission at gmail.com. Uh, individual commissioners are available. We are assigned actually by ward, uh, so the door is open. We are a body that does not have um, police powers. Police powers meaning we can't subpoena people, but we do have uh, a very strong reputation of bringing people before us, asking the hard questions as we did with Superintendent Smith, uh, and as we will do um, as we offer another invitation uh, to the mayor to come back. The mayor has said that he's available to come back. Uh, we haven't done so because we've been really busy around dealing with us, a lot of the complaints that have come in, and as well as trying to make sure that we give a very strong report to the community. Uh, so I look forward to our, our upcoming year. And what I've said to people about the city of Brockton is a great city. Say something uh, great about the city of Brockton. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much for asking additional questions.